afternoon, everyone. My name is Katie Kim. I am 16 years old, and currently I'm attending International School of Bank. Now, before I get started on my talk today, I would like to present a short little biography about myself. My twin brother and I were born to a mother who died giving birth to us, and to a father who knew a tough children. Shortly after our birth, we were adopted into two very different families. While I was raised into a life of luxury and privilege, my brother, being adopted by our real aunt and uncle, was raised on a moisture farm. When I was much older, I had the opportunity to go on a great adventure and meet many different kinds of people, including my brother, who obviously fell in love with me, but thankfully, he found out about a relationship before anything else could. Nevertheless, with my newly new friends and brother, we managed to save the galaxy, and I even learned to control the force. Now, at this point, most of you are probably thinking, wait, this sounds awfully familiar. And you're a hint. This isn't a biography about myself, but rather an account of the fictional character of Princess Leia from the famous series Star Wars. Now, if I hadn't mentioned terms that are unique to Star Wars, such as galaxy and the force, would you have made the connection? Probably not. The clarity that I shared with you was an example of deliberate manipulation through language, a technique that is used by the media so frequently and subtly that most of the time you aren't even aware of it. This is what I'll be talking about today, and specifically its usage in advertising. Now, a very important fact that people often overlook or ignore is that the media is an industry based on one thing and one thing only, money. Therefore, the media often presents misleading information and concealed truth to attract as large of an audience as possible. From the false lines of scientifically proven to the misleading art of euphemism, Language and advertisements are all potentially constructed to portray a specific idea, but more importantly, to persuade. In three studies conducted by Scott Purvis of the marketing research firm Gallup and Robinson, 240 pairs of advertisements were presented to viewers, who were then asked to choose the advertisement of each pair that was the most persuasive. Here's an example of one of the pairs of advertisements used in one of the studies. Now, looking at these two advertisements for the same product from the same company, which is most persuasive? Is it advertisement A, which uses many rhetorical devices such as repetition and positive expressions such as America's most prescribed acid control medicine, consistently and complete heart relief? Or is it advertisement B, which uses no rhetorical devices? and uses more negative phrases, such as suffering and potential fierce condition. If you answered advertisement A, you are correct. Advertisement A was actually one of the 120 pairs of advertisements that used rhetorical devices. These advertisements were found to have higher memorability and a much higher persuasion score than those that did not. This result emphasizes how rhetorical devices can be a powerful factor in persuading a consumer to buy or use a certain product. William West, a well-known linguist and author, states that there are three main rhetorical devices used by society and especially by the media to persuade us as potential customers. The first device is euphemism, or language designed to mislead cover up the unpleasant is specifically designed to alter our perception of reality. When I was a child, like most children, I went through a phase in which everything I touched seemed to matter sleeping. Now, at first, I would sad to my mother and say in the most miserable voice of six-year-old semester, Mommy, I broke it. But as I got older and smarter, I found a way to avoid trouble. Instead of saying, I broke it, I began to state phrases such as, I temporarily dismantled it. 
And as I said, I didn't think that I was deceiving my mother, rather that I was explaining what had happened in that terms. But I mean, how far you deceive them the less. And maybe it's because my mother was kind, or because she was deceived by my cunning wit. But she seemed to yell at me less when I was a place to accept it. This technique is most frequently used in advertisements to replace expressions that are unpleasant rather than uncomfortable, such as in this advertisement for a product or company. The phrase used is replaced with the expression certified to own. Now, these two phrases mean the same thing, they're both used, but they give us different feelings and emotions. Certified pre-owned gives more of a sense of dependability and trust because of the certification. This makes euphemism an effective tool in advertising. The second rhetorical device is jargon, or the specialized language of a specific group. Have you ever gone to the doctor's office and been given a prescription in which you realize you didn't understand a word of it. I don't know. This recently happened to me when I went to the doctor's office, and I received a prescription that stated, abstain from the aggregation of the intake of caffeinated drinks and possible allergies to alleviate arrhythmia. In this case, medical jargon is used, making it difficult for a person like me, who is not medically trained, to understand what was written. And in advertisements, the seclusionary language aids in attracting specific members of a group while at the same time repulsing other members that might not understand the phrases given. For example, in this advertisement, phrases such as 200,000 CSM air and Coca-Cola to speak up with a view, attracting specific members who understand these phrases while at the same time repulsing average members who might not understand the expression given. The third rhetorical device is inflated language, or language designed to make the ordinary seem extraordinary and the common uncommon. Coca-Cola advertisements are one of the finest illustrations of this device. Nearly every Coca-Cola advertisement introduces the idea that through the uses of their products, a normal, average person can become cool, popular, and the object of affection. And in this specific advertisement, it deliberately states that by merely drinking this soda pop, children have a much higher chance of keeping, of fitting in and gaining acceptance. Now, has that ever resulted in that for you? All joking aside, Due to the effectiveness of these rhetorical devices in persuading the consumer, language and advertisements are all constantly constructed to manipulate and to convince. And although language is just a small portion of the countless forms of deliberate manipulation, I can tell you to look for these misleading devices used so cleverly by the media and to avoid being misled. Furthermore, I urge you to raise awareness of the subtle form of manipulation. According to Dr. Christina Blair of the Bowling Green State University, there are a limited number of studies that even recognizes the use of rhetorical devices in advertisements. The more you are able to bring awareness to this issue and increase the regulation of advertisements, the less you can allow the media to so easily deceive and manipulate us. Thank you.